let's see lights option add and light directly from here we have point light first so we need to go to render mode to have effect of lights so as you can see we are in render mode now the power we can increase it from here directly so at 100 watt it looks like this let's move to 200 so you can increase the power and what we have few more options. we can choose to not have shadows and to have shadows we can also check and uncheck the contact shadows so contact shadows between the surface and the object we can switch from point light to let's say spotlight and as you can see spotlight is something like this we can change the direction of a spotlight and we can also increase and decrease the area of a spotlight like this by pulling this arrow up and down we can switch from spot to area and as you can see area light is have the effect of an area which is larger than the spotlight we can also direct the light by grabbing this yellow dot and we can always change the power we have different shapes of area light so we can choose from disk to square to ellipse so depending upon the area and we can change the size of this uh, area light so next is sunlight which is basically kind of having a sun we need to reduce the strength of the sun we can always choose to direct the light of sun but location of sun doesn't matter so just like sun location doesn't matter but we can change the direction we can change the color of the sun or in fact any color of any light source i have three lights here go to render properties and check on ambient occlusion you should do that to get more details on the surface so right now our surface is very plain but if, we, if it was a rough surface it would have shown much more detail so ambient occlusion uh, actually used to get the light effect on rough surface or the detailed surfaces not just the rough surface come down here under the shadow you can click on contact shadow as you can see by name itself whatever the contact it makes as you can clearly see the difference it will show in the render let me change the color of the monkey now to show you something more so under the materials if you come down you have specular you can increase the specular and you can decrease the roughness so you will have reflection of light on the body so let's go to render property and click on screen space reflection so if i check it off you can see the difference so once the light hit on the surface and then touch the object it will give that effect then come down to shadow under the render properties you will have cube size cube cells will add strength to the shadow so as you can see if i increase the pixels our shadows become much more strong and much more solid rather than soft so if i uncheck the soft shadow you can you can see how solid our shadow is but generally we don't do that we only do it for specific purpose so let me check it again and you can see the lightness in the shadow now we can press ctrl shift 0 to add our camera for the current view we can locate it as per our requirement and now if, I, if we render it with f12 you can see the shadow effect we have seen alt d for objects now see alt d for light so if we do alt d and if we move it here you will have option to change the color from here both the lights will have same color but if you want them to edit separately you just have to click this two here as the moment you do that now you can edit them individually you can give them different color and all the light properties will be different or can be different depending upon the requirement if you want to change the properties of few lights to a particular light all you need to do is select the lights and select the light that you need to change the properties of do right click on the power and copy to select it so as you can see all the three lights have same properties let's do it for the second one we'll select the first and the third light and then we'll select the second light so first and third and then the second and we'll right click on the power and copy to select it so now all the three light will have same properties you can add a camera from add and camera directly so we can rotate this camera we can move this camera and we can even scale this camera but the camera is required because once you are done with your modeling we need a particular picture to get rendered or even animation so once you are happy you can just choose your camera you can click here on this small icon of camera and basically you will just zoom zoomed in to the camera then you can do some adjustment like moving object or this and that and once you are happy you can render with f12 we can come out of camera by clicking this small icon camera or we can just move with the mouse and if you press ctrl alt 0 the camera will capture the current view so let's say this is the current view and i want to capture this so alt ctrl and 0 and we can get this we can also go with the view camera and active camera like this
Now let's say sometime if you are unable to select the camera like this here you cannot select the camera so what you need to do is select the camera from this here top right option go to camera properties and change the clip start value so from 0 0.8 we'll do 0 0.1 and as you can see this yellow highlight which means we can now select the camera and do the operations let's see how to make basic animation pull up this window like this to add timeline that is animation timeline so in the timeline as you can see we have frames from 0 to 250 now if i move this cube from here to y axis somewhere there and if i play with space bar nothing is happening because we haven't added the keyframes so at zero frame just press i to insert the frame and press location rotation or scale so now as you can see this yellow dots this is set now so first keyframe is set now at 20 we'll move this cube in y axis in y direction and then i press i again and do rotation location scale so second key keyframe has been inserted Similarly, I'll move it in x-axis in this direction and I again insert the keyframe and so I'll continue this process. So I'm back to the initial position and it, now if I press spacebar and you can see the box is moving. This is our basic animation. This is the way you can animate anything. Now this is not limited to the movement, we can also rotate it and keyframe it or we can also scale it. So for example, I have inserted rotation keyframes here in my timeline and you can see the animation and I have also scaled it. So in this particular animation, I have scaled cube at various position and I have animated it. You can remove the backgrounds and light and everything from viewport overlays here. You can either individually uncheck them like this or you can press shift alt z. So if you do that, everything from the background will go away except the main object. Now in order to render, you have to press F12, but you need a camera first. So we'll add a camera. Once you're okay with everything, you can press F12 and this is the render image. There is something called as freestyle render. So right now we are in render mode. We'll go to render properties here and at the bottom you'll see freestyle render. So let's adjust our camera and press F12. So F12 is for render. So once you do that and once the image is rendered, you will see output like this. So this was our render and you can see there are some sort of outlines made. So in the freestyle render, you will see the outlines. Let's do one more thing. We'll add the monkey and we'll again do the same thing. We'll render the image by F12 and you can see we have outline here. So this is the property of Blender itself. Let's see one more basic animation. So I have this basic arrangement of cube, cylinder and a cone. I'll select the cylinder and press I and insert keyframe. Then I'll move to keyframe number 20 or 30 and then I'll just grab the cylinder and pull it up little bit and then I'll press I again and insert the keyframe. Now I'll choose the small cone which is inside the cylinder on the next frame which is at 53 and then I'll grab it and I pull it, pull it outside and then I press I again and insert the keyframe. Let's move the cone in Y direction and also scale it little bit. So just to make it little dramatic. I made a mistake here because I did not change the frame. So from 53 to 81 and then I should move the cone and scale it. Now let's press I and insert it. And the last frame, we'll just move it little bit more in the Y direction and we'll press I and insert the keyframe, location, rotation, scale. And now let's play with the space bar. So this is absolute basic stuff just to give you an idea of what you can do with your creativity. So just with simple steps, we can create very basic animation in Blender and we can go to very advanced also to make like short films and all. And people have made many short films, a very good ones in Blender. Let's give material. Select this monkey and go down here at this option. It is called as material properties. Click new and we'll have a few option here. So this is the preview. We can see how it will look. And this is the most basic color that we can give. We can move our cursor anywhere. Right now it's not showing because we are not in material preview or render mode. So this is the render view and this is material preview. Render view will only have effect if we have light. So we'll add a light. 
so here in the light option we can increase the light power so now you can see the color and everything in the render option if we come down here we have few properties of light that we have already seen let's go to material preview in the material preview we have option of this hdris which are pre-saved and the light effect will have depending upon this hdris so if we click on this basically these are the environments and depending upon on this environments we'll have light effect on our object but render will have normal light effect now as you can see we can add light directly from here so let's go back to the material mode and we can move our cursor to give any color to our object it is as simple as that but if you want to give color to a specific area of the object then go to edit mode select the plane that you need to change the color of so for example we'll change this to go to top and click on this plus icon and then assign and then it is assign and add new so now we have given new color and we can move around to give any color to this so let's give it a blue as you can see we have got a blue color here on the nose and we can choose any color from here we can also choose black by moving down this cursor here and there we have it once you are done you can get the final render of your project you click on this camera so that we can capture what we need in the output properties you can see we have resolution for the images and we also have few properties we can change png to any other format we can we also have the properties for animation we also have three engines here but we don't need it right now so there are few properties we can play with this like shadows and fill and performance and everything uh, but for basic thing we just need to do the render go to render and re do render image or you can also press f12 and once you are done you will get the output like this so object which was under our camera has been rendered like this and we can always choose to save this image we can go to image and save us to save this image on our local disk